The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour, and I'm also the author of the opening call, a daily newsletter. <clears throat> Very interesting. I'm looking at our newsletter. Uh, the Dow is down um, 132 points, down 0.49. The S&P is only down, it's about unchanged, actually. And uh, we're fortunate in that we have one stock that's up 0.87%. Another one that is uh, down a little bit. It was up sharply yesterday, giving back some. To, uh, another one that's up 0.12%. Uh, and uh, another one that's up 1.18%. Uh, uh, that's, you know, this is really a bifurcated market. We're looking at the Dow, I'm showing you right here, forming either a double cup formation. I could even think of it as a rectangle. We'll put this in as a rectangle for the moment. Just stuck in a range. Starts to close under 27,000. That'll make do the damage that we're talking about uh, for some time now. And that is to see the moving averages of importance. This is go right here to the Dow uh, INDU. Look, the, uh, the Dow is holding the nine period exponential moving average. It goes green when it crosses the 14 period. You can use anything you want. Just be consistent in whatever you do. This is what I find uh, for me over the many years and hundreds of thousands of charts that I've done. Look how it's held the support of this green line. So you could use, I, I know uh, uh, people use different uh, moving averages. I like this. Look how it's held so nicely in the Dow. So we were fortunate at that doji low. We were long, uh, a good position um, uh, in the Dow. We took a tiny bit off uh, on the way up. We've still kept a good call. But at the same time, I have said that we are short from seven points off the all-time high that was made right here on this little doji candle. And you can see these little green, uh, these green numbers right here. These are resistance levels, automated, Chapman wave automated resistance levels. We've already passed 27,339. Now the new one that popped up today is 27,474. Normally in this case is that there's a stalling action at this if it isn't a big turnaround. And then if it takes it out, you've got to wait for the next level of, of resistance to come in, or in this case support. You can see there are very few support levels at all. It's, it, this is very strong. So I've said that until we start to see the down close decisively below the nine period moving average, preferably a close below the black line, that's the 27,030 27, level, that's where we'll start to see the market turn down sharply. And then I also say to subscribers to my opening call <clears throat> that we're just going to stay with these positions for now. It's a little uncomfortable to be long and short, although we're more long than we are short. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to add to the short side unless certain things happen. We had one little experiment today with uh, the volatility in index. It was either it just worked immediately or it didn't work at all. Very tight, very tight stop on a little nibble, just a very small position, just kind of an experiment. And I'll tell you why I wanted to experiment, because if you're looking at the Dow, it's held very nicely in this range. If you're looking at the S and P, the S and P has also where did that just oh did it over here? And let's just do it on this on this chart that I like to use as kind of a template. Look, it's walking the nine period exponential moving average. It went right down to these resistance. Look at the uh, sorry, the support levels, these automated support levels, 2968. What was the low? 2975, and there was one at 2975 and 2968. Held it beautifully, held the 14 period moving average beautifully, and it's running. So that says, when I said it was a bifurcated market, you can see that. Uh, you've got the Dow with the uh, Triple M. Where's Triple M? There it is. Look, Triple M having a good day today, finally, 146. Caterpillar, hug. 
down five at 132.74. It actually was yesterday trading in the 135 area. It goes down today to 132.68. Uh, now it's come back a little bit. Uh, Boeing, same thing. Ugly, ugly session. Look at this. Down 10 at 362. That's the weighting of the Dow. Now look at the QQQ. One, two, three. The QQQ. A lot of resistance levels coming up at 105.10, 105.47, 105.69, all the way across there. When it took out the other one, it stalled the market. Then it pulled back sharply to the 14 period moving average. Now it's running again to an all time high. And that's saying to me that within the context of what I'm looking at, you've got the XLF, the financials. And I've been talking about this for months. I've been saying the reason why we have bank stock is because I think the financials are very quietly doing a very good job. And at the same time as they're doing a good job, there are some that are doing much better than others. But this is the total financial S&P financial ETF spider. And look how nicely this is at, at a recovery high. What about Goldman Sachs? Goldman Sachs today is up 0.85 cents. Bumping into resistance here, but look at this nice move, walking that nine period exponential moving average. Look at gold. Gold is finally saying, hey, I'm walking this, but I'm really starting to skip the nine. I'm going down to the 14 period moving average. <clears throat> if gold trading at 14.22 right now, the continuous contract of one actually does close. First of all, it has to close under 14.11. That's the 14 period moving average. But second, it has to close underneath 1400 underneath the 1401 low of the 17th why because that's the only way you're going to get an arch formation that says aha now we've got maybe a bigger rectangle uh formation uh, i'm not going to call that an oval it's more like a rectangle and that's going to say it could be trading in this range and this is a really good spike into the 1460s silver on the other hand has in fact moved very nicely to the upside it's even taking out 1652 the automated chapman wave resistance high today is 1668 this is acting extremely well now it's getting a little bit oversold uh, overbought not even close to oversold it's very overbought and the dollar using the same technique look at this nice cup formation Stalled here at the resistance, 97.84 on the left, 97.57, it went above that. It's just kind of in this range. Doji candle, we'll see what happens after this. Crude oil, let's do crude oil doing the same, same technique. Crude oil right now is underneath the 9, underneath the 14, just kind of stuck. Let's go to it in real life. Uh, let's go out of that. Here we go. Crude oil, we're going to click this. We've got crude oil. Okay, there it is. Crude oil just stuck in this lower range, and the MAGD is kind of weak. Stochastic is very weak at 21%. It's tried to rally. It didn't help the price very much. I think crude oil is just stuck. It's going to try to form an H pattern, a lowercase h on the Chapman Wave methodology. What does that mean? It means if I can just go across to this right here, drag it across. You see, in the Chapman Wave, we look for it. We try to identify the lowest low bar. We count each successively higher peak, A, B, C, D. You can go E, F, and G. But D is where other things can happen. Look on the left side. You can just see the crude oil D at 61, uh, 9, I think it is. Look at that sharp pullback. And then you get an arch formation or a cup formation or a mixture. Those are the patterns we're looking at all the time. Be right back in a moment. The Dow is down 120. S&P is now up 1%. I'll be right back, and we want to look at um, new highs in the SMH, the Semiconductor Index. I'll talk about that in a moment. I'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Folks, so let's go back a minute and go look at uh, the semiconductor index. The semiconductor index trading at an all-time high. Leg D in the weekly chart, F, F slash C in the daily chart. And I, I have to, this is not an F, this looks to me like a B in the monthly chart. And that's really exciting. And it's not the end of the month yet. We've got, let me just check here, we've got July, July goes to the 31st Wednesday. Hey, today a week, we end, end the month. And so far, this has been a very good month, but certainly a wonderful month for the semiconductor index. And the MACD, with a week to go, has just crossed positive for the very first time in this little W formation. Stochastic's still only at 70%. Yep, 70%. Uh, this is nice action. This is, I mean, this is just fantastic that it's gone from the low of 80.71, up 40 points, up 50%, to a high of 122.82 as we're talking. Uh, this, is a, this is very good action. And that speaks to this bifurcated market. You've got some areas that are doing extremely well, and you've got other areas like... Uh, uh, Norfolk Southern, which came out with earnings today, Norfolk, Norfolk Southern is trading down nine at 187, and uh, this is uh, look at this Chapman Wave. What do I just to show you in the Chapman Wave methodology? Those D's can be lethal. A, B, C, D. Just a little over a week ago, it goes to uh, 207, and now it's trading at 183. On the 200 period moving average. Um, so that's what is it doing to the uh, IYT? Well, this is going to be interesting because the IYT, which is the transportation index ETF, is trading up $1.16 to $193.83. Wait a minute. How's that to be? Well, because United, United Parcel Service uh, just spiked to 113.27. It's up eight. So obviously, the uh, semis are still doing pretty nicely. Uh, let me just check. Is that a recovery high? No. Get rid of that. No, it hasn't. Oh, yeah, maybe it is. So we've got the uh, 11503, 11491, 11498, and today's high is 114.83. Close. It's just breaking out uh, United Parcel shipping packages, breaking out 
it'll make a leg B with another another a dollar high. It makes a leg B in the monthly chart. That is finally doing something uh, a, a lot better. Uh, let's see, got Discover card, DFS. DFS is trading at leg D in the monthly chart. Huge leg G slash C in the daily chart. I'm sorry, in the weekly chart is a leg D breakout, cup and ladle breakout that usually goes to a D. Oh my goodness, all time highs, 9171. These credit card companies are charging a bundle between 14 and 19% in some cases. And what are they paying? Nothing for their rates. So um, what a fantastic, we must have had a, a, a brilliant uh, result, earnings result today. RHI, uh, this, is, uh, this is Robert Half International, spikes up, up 3.86 at 62.66. Uh, not a new high, no, it's just in the middle of the range. All-time high was around about 69. It plummets down to the 53s. Now it's training up at 62.64. Very nice action, but not good enough. That monthly chart really needs to get to the 70 area to start saying, yep, there's a chance it could finally go to a leg D. Yeah, over 80. And that's going to take a while. And that's actually a good sign because it's looking out of the economy. So as long as it's building steam to go to the upside. Lad, I, we used to have a position in this a long time ago. Lithium Motors, haven't looked at it for a while. All time high, 131.12. Uh, this can't be a leg A in the daily, surely. Um, but in the weekly, it's A, B, C, D, E. Leg E in the weekly chart, huge candle. And look at this candle today, up 13 and 131, up 11%. Wow, that must have been absolutely fantastic earnings. They are, I believe that they have um, sales forces out in the, wherever there are no, um, what do you call those things? Show Showrooms, uh, like in cities and all that. These are out in the country, LAD uh, Motors, Lithium Motors, LAD is a symbol. Um, so they must be doing very nicely. Let's see what GE had a fabulous day yesterday and another day today. It's, uh, it's down three cents, but it made a new recovery high at 10.70. And General Motors, with all the news and stuff going on, China and uh, tariffs and all this, and Mexico, is trading down three cents at 40.67 at a recovery high. This is really good action, having gone from the 31s to the 40 level. I would say nine points is very good. So um, there is some very nice action going on. There's also some terrible action going on. So we'll have to sort that out. The other thing I was asked about is would, would I uh, just uh, quickly look at, um, where was it? D, uh, Deutsche Bank, DB. Deutsche Bank, uh, they're having a lot of problems, but they're holding okay, down 10 cents at 785. I'm going to suggest that the low that was made at $6.65, what was it, $6.61 back in the week of the 7th of June of this year is a low of consequence, at least in the short to intermediate term. I think it's going to take a lot now to go back uh, under the 650 level. I think that we've got a low that says sideways trading band as other things start to happen. You, know, you can just beat it. You can beat this thing just so many times, and at some point it wants to have a little bit of a bounce. I think that's what it's in right now. A question I had was, um, what, what about Chipotle? Chipotle, Mexican, you know, that I've never, ever um, eaten, ate or eaten in a Chipotle. Uh, CMG is trading at 785.33, up 45. Wow, leg E, leg F in the weekly chart. It's only a leg B in the monthly chart. Look at this monthly chart. Remember when they were having, where the, where the modus operandi was to see how many people they could send uh, to the bathroom? And now they've changed that completely. A, B, C, D, E, F, peak F in the monthly chart, an all-time high in the 700s, has a little problem, um, and flushes out into the 290, what is that, 247 level um, in February of last year, and has now gone, wow, 250, let's call it 250, and it's now 785. I, I, I would have to say that uh, 520 points is a spectacular run after a spectacular dive. 
Very good. Bravo to CMG. Uh, trading up 45 right now. Must have had really good earnings. And so when I say bifurcated, <clears throat> what I am saying is that there are certain sectors that are not doing well. But within those sectors, sometimes there are stocks that are doing well, some that are not. And that's the same thing in the um, heavy industrial area. <clears throat> dear, oh dear, wrong, wrong window. Dear D symbol trading down $1.22 at $167.13. This had a beautiful run, almost to the highs after all that bad news with the farms and and uh, maybe China's not buying uh, for their for their own equipment, etc. And yes, dear. Um, what a spectacular move from December in the 134s. It comes up to the 167 area, almost at an all-time high. I like that. Let's just see. Wheat does. Wheat is trading up, up a 9 at 496. Soybean trading um, up 5. And corn is trading up. We'll talk about the, uh, the uh, grains in a moment when we get back. That's what Trap and Tiger Technicians are. We'll be right back. Love to take your call. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawn charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So I hadn't finished. The corn has a little bit of a bounce today, and then it's given some of it back. It's unchanged at 425 and a half. One of the reasons why I think that this is the start of something, but it got kind of carried away with all the short selling, I suspect, um, is that going from 362 or under 362 in the weekly chart corn continuous contract to 486 to the 
Um, 200 period exponential moving average in one swoop, leg B, but this was barely a peak A. Says to me, yeah, you're going to have a bit of a pullback, but it's starting the process of changing the monthly chart from sharply down to at least stable, the weekly chart from sharply down to at least in a buy mode, <clears throat> suggesting there should be at some point a C and a D, doesn't say how high. And the, and the daily chart says, yeah, it's stuck in a range, but there's going to be a trigger at some point if it can get over 443. It's at 425 and a half right now. If it can close for two days about 444. Four, four, I'd say 443. Um, that would start to move even higher. So yeah, we're getting there. It's just it's a, it's a process. The other thing I, I want to look at was um, tel, te, ter, 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 not Teledyne, but Teledyne. Teledyne trading at uh, 55.92. It's only up 8.79, up 18 percent. Just yesterday it was in the 47s, and now it's 56s. This is incredible action, and this is really the semiconductors. I, they, the, the book to bill, or whatever they call it, the billing ratio, must have been, as we're speaking, it must be improving a ton, because I, from everything I'm hearing, they haven't really seen the orders come in. But at the same time, look at these stocks. Let me see what Xilinx is. Xilinx, uh, ZXLNX. Trading at um, up 360 at 130.88 all time high is at the 140 area. This is in leg. Is this a C or a D? Uh, yeah, this is still leg C. This is a really good action. I I am so impressed. Whew, what a nice trade it would have been, huh? We were short the the Sox index. We've been long and short, and I just didn't get long again. That was very silly. No reason to. Then no excuse. All the technicals were good. It was just. I didn't want to get on because every time it got on, it had a sudden pullback. And then when it took off, it just took off like lightning. So that's a question about the gold. Uh, thinking of trading around core position in gold and new mine, and new, new mine mining, NG and AEM. Um, do I think that there's going to be a pullback? Let me just show you something here. The XAU, which is, here we go, XAU trading at 92.35, up $1.15. This is the Philadelphia gold and silver index has broken out beautifully. It's gone back into this whole rectangle formation that it had been in for literally, uh, you know, a couple of years, 17 and 18, and went under it in 19, and it came back into it. Now it's trying to go above it. So that says that, let me show you the big picture. Philadelphia gold and silver index way back in 2010. In December, it makes a high of 232.72. Has a little problem, comes back and goes down to 38.36. Doji candle, low trough E. Um, I, that was January of 2016. Bounces back to the 14 to the 200 period moving average in the monthly chart, and then comes back sharply. Goes to the 103 area. No, actually more. It goes to 100 and was that 15? Yes, 114.75. And then it pulls back to a little doji low of, of September of last year to 60.59. So now it's had a, a good 45, 50, almost 50 percent rally. I think it's getting close to a little time out. But I, there's no other way I can call this. This is leg B in the monthly, in the weekly chart, a brand new buy signal. It doesn't say that it has to go up as much as it's just done, but it does say that it should go to a leg C above the most recent high. And even a D, and then I would say in the 95s, it's probably going to bump into a lot of resistance and then have maybe a digestion of, of sideways action, maybe cheat the 81 level that was uh, resistance now as support, going to 83, very strong support, maybe between 83 and 85 initially, and just go into a rectangle formation. I like it. So, yes, if you want to trade around it, that's fine. Don't, don't get too carried away. Stay in your core positions because this is a great move up. In gold, gold does like to give back a lot of its gains after it's had a spectacular move, but I haven't yet got that signal. Uh, I'm just going to show you something else in the GDX. The GDX daily is in leg D with a little doji candle here. Just make it simple. At 28, if the GDX, which has been reluctant to pull back for, for weeks and weeks and weeks because it just keeps going high or it goes sideways, if it does close under 26.50, in the next two weeks, that says, yep, it's in a consolidation phase, and you'll have to wait for a leg D. Uh, 
Now, I had a question. It's a good question. The question is, uh, would your analysis of XAU change on the weekly if, which I believe to be the case, this is the person who asked the question, your F is actually an E? Um, ye Look, when we made this peak E right here, in the weekly chart on the GDX at 23.70, it pulled back pretty sharply to the 20 level. And then it also made a cup. And that cup broke out with a peak A, and the low was 20.14, the week of the 3rd of May. But look how the MACD is cross positive. Look how the stochastic at 93 is holding steady at the higher level, very strong. And look at the way the 9 and 14 period moving average are high, high, much higher. And look at the way it is just treated this as a fulcrum for a move that be con could be considered a propeller shaft right here in the 200 period moving average or the high that was made at that peak E. And now if I do this and make a new, where we go, if I make a new uh, one to one, it's done the most conservative from the base of 20 to the high of 26. But if I do it from the moving average itself, which is kind of what I like to do when I do this one to one measurement right here, it's gone even higher. That should have taken you to 27.72. So this little doji candle says probably a little bit of a pullback. And then we start another move up and it starts to go higher. And I don't think much higher. So I'm watching the doji candle. We've got two and a half days to go for this week. So I'm not going to uh, call it as it is right now because it's a weekly chart. I have to wait for the full week to close. The MACD and Stochastic are really strong. I don't think it's going to give back much. If you want to trade around, I'd keep the core position. I would rather than trade around, I'd rather wait for a little bit of a pullback to do some buying. If you're trading around and getting out, this is such a big move that it's going to have to be a, a, an event that makes gold unfavorable. It's going to have to be a peace event internationally. I just don't see that quite on the horizon right now. So I'm inclined to say, if you're going to trade around it, rather not do too much, lighten up just a little bit because there have been spectacular moves. Uh, you were talking about, uh, where was it? Uh, NEM, let's just go to NEM. Look at this. NEM is trading. Uh, in, this is, I am calling this a leg E and not a new leg A in the weekly, but a leg B in the monthly. And this is a brand new ABCD uh, pullback in the in the daily. All right, this is what I would say to you. Just take a tiny little bit off, and it's a 39.48, under 38, somewhere in the 37.60, start putting something back. That's the way I would deal with it. And over 6 or 7%. I'm not sure I actually want to mess around with that. I'd rather say to you, why don't you just hold it and let's see if you just want to add to that position uh, coming into any sharp pullback. Yeah. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Tom O'Brien published the 900th issue of his weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, on July 22nd. It's amazing he started The Gold Report more than 17 years ago when gold was trading at only $252. To celebrate, we're having a special Tiger Dollar sale. Right now, you can spend only $495, and we'll give you 200 extra Tiger Dollars, so you'll end up with 695 Tiger Dollars, which is the yearly price of The Gold Report. Tiger Dollars can be used for any TFN newsletter or service, and this offer is open to new and current subscribers. 
With gold making six-year highs and gold mining equities trading higher, this is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report at a dramatic savings. For all the details, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This deal ends July 31st, so don't miss out. Get your Tiger Dollars and sign up today for the Gold Report 900th issue sale. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, so a, cu a couple of you mentioned, uh, we know that you like to show the shorter term intraday stuff. Um, when we're actually looking at big pictures, what does a two-minute chart do, even though we enjoy it, well, it doesn't, or, you know, well, where does it fit into your program? It's the chart formations. Look at that peak E in the 10-minute chart of the E-mini. Look how sharp we would pull back from the 3007 area down to the 2996s. Look at this nice move that went to a peak D. Look at this cup formation that we're looking at right now. The E-mini is up three. If the E-mini by 2 o'clock this afternoon is actually trading at 3,012.75 3, or higher, that's going to be very good action. If it suddenly gives everything back and it's down below 3,003, um, that says, uh-oh, be careful for, um, uh, Friday, uh, for Thursday. Remember yesterday I said, be careful. I think there's going to be some kind of a pullback consolidation tomorrow. So this is kind of what we've seen, but actually some of the indices are doing very nicely. So I showed more as patterns than anything else. I'm not saying anybody should trade it like this. Now you need different techniques and tools to be able to do that, but it's just to show the patterns. I wanted to go back to the GDX, because the point that was made is, if there's an alternate count, could this not be the the extension of the letters that we were looking at after that peak E on the week of the 22nd of February? The high was 23.17. Good point. But when you've used up this kind of time, when the MACD has actually gone much lower rather than this very soft M-shaped pattern and it's making a nominal new high, but you then cross very sharply higher, if the stochastic goes under 20% and then it goes up over 90%, not even 80, but 90 to the 93% level, I'm more inclined to say, yes, I call this a G slash C as an alternative count. My eye says... Everything about this should be that there's a pullback maybe to the 27.20, maybe even 26.80s, but there'll be one more spike over the next two weeks to say, yep, there's that leg D, doesn't have to go much higher. And then I think that gold could have a pretty decent time and some price pullback. And even if you look at the DDZ, DDZ, DZZ, DZZ, we once traded this very nicely, haven't done that for a while. Trading it down four cents at 481. This is the 200 percent. This is the double gold short, E T H E T H E T N. Um, yeah, it's trying to rally off off the slow, and I suspect that it's not going to go too much deeper. Maybe it's the 460 level, and then all of a sudden they'll announce the 900 to one split, and you'll see the D Z Z not at 481, but at 40.81 or 400, whatever it is. They always do that. And then over the months, it goes back to four. This is what they keep doing all the time with these ETFs, um, the, the two and three times uh, ETFs. All right, enough with that. Question I had about just real quickly in the crude oil, the crude oil trading at um, 
Yes, I do think it's stuck in the range, and I drew this rectangle. It's gone above it a little bit and then back in, in the range again and then below it and then back in the range. So I'm thinking that the magnet now is a 57, 30 area, up and down and up and down, but 57 is kind of where it wants to keep coming back. So even if it goes down, unless it breaks 54, that'll be very serious. Then you'll see something in the XAL, XAL, which is the airline index. Now look at that. A leg D. Finally, we've got our leg D in the daily. Very nice move up $1.29 to $109.29. And there's your D. Uh, I'm going to put that in. Leg C in the weekly. So this is oh, and there's a breakout in the monthly. So finally, we're seeing some action. Now, I've got a couple of things that I want to quickly add before this break comes up. If instead, the reason why we want to re we've remained long, and the reason why even today I didn't add to the short position, even though we are short the Dow from seven points off the high on a different, a separate trade altogether, is because if you take time to move sideways, look at the, uh, let me go to the, oh, well, go to the, S, maybe the SPY, because many of you, this instead of going to an index, it's easier just to go SPY. Look at the SPY. 301.13 is the all time high. I'm going to go one at a time. The, the daily says it's taken a lot of time, but it's gone to an all-time high. 294.95 was the high back in uh, September. No, well, we're not talking about May. I'm sorry, May of this year. And then it plummets down to 20, 273. I shouldn't say plummets. It drops very sharply down to, below the 200 period moving average. And then look at the MACD turns up and look what's happened. And now you can see you've really gone sideways for the last two weeks or three weeks. You use usurping energy in the in the MACD. Stochastic's fallen all the way to 61%. But the price is within a point of an all-time high. That's what counts. Price is the arbiter of the trend. Don't get it confused. And I, I want you to show something. I'm going to ask Dave White if I can if I can use this maybe tomorrow. I'll ask him for permission. I want you to show something on his oscillator, his nine, nine oscillator, which is really a fantastic instrument. But I wanted to show something. I, if I can do it here, I'll do it here. Let me just see if I can find one. Yeah, there we are. This is a good example. You see the way the MACD is coming down here from the high in March when we got that peak D? And there was a dip in the price of the S&P, and it goes from 281.87 on the 4th of March. It goes down to uh, 272.42. Feels like a lot, but when you're looking at this, it's just really a blip. And then it goes back above the moving averages, and then goes under it, but holds them on a closing basis. Look at the weakness in the MACD. It deflected lower. Look at the stochastic, how sharply it fell, and then it rallied, and then it sharply. And yet the price basically was making higher highs and higher lows. How do you deal with that? What techniques can you use? And that's the issue. And that's what I show subscribers to my opening call. That's the reason why we've kind of stuck with what we've, we've been long and we try to add to it when we can, because if you're getting price movement that is very positive and the technicals are deteriorating, but the price refuses to acknowledge it and says, no, I, I'm really not interested, you know, uh, why don't you find something else to worry about? Because I'm just holding great. I mean, I, I like what I'm doing here. You're making it like it's a big deal, but actually it's not a big deal. Um, even I couldn't put a down arrow after the peak F. I should have technically, because the MACD and stochastic turned down. But it barely, it barely closed below the 14 period moving average, and now it's holding. But here's the other thing: if it go, goes another day, and all of a sudden it starts to fail because of maybe China, the talks are not going as well. I don't, I don't care what it is, whatever the news is. Um, then what we're going to see is from the high that was made on the 15th at 301.13 to the high that's made maybe tomorrow or the next day, maybe even Monday. The technicals have not verified that high. And if there then is weakness, it says, now watch out because you've used up your time just as you did back in when we had our sell signal. Um, I mean, just for the, well, I'll stick with this. When we got the sell signal in the Dow, I'm using the S&P, but look how long it took before the technicals actually broke down. It was like five or six or even seven days before all the technicals gave signals. 
So that's what I'm saying. That's the only way you're going to get a pretty serious sell-off is that we've already used that most of the time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven sessions since the all-time high is three or 1.13. So you could say, wait a minute, seven sessions in such a big bull market, you still haven't made a new high? What's with that? I agree. I think that is a, an issue. But at the same time, it's held fantastically. Um, if you were short this, you'd be looking at uh, a bit of a loss. If you were shorted anywhere other than from the, uh, the, the the next day to confirm the peak F. But at the same time, this doesn't look like a B. It looks like if there isn't and everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Let me just run this real quickly. So um, um, I was talking about, if I can just find this right now, so about the SPY. So the SPY needs to close below 297.60, somewhere around there. Closes under that and says, oh, okay, finally you should see deterioration in the technicals and the price but it hasn't done that yet now what i did want to say is that if there is a move by tuesday wednesday of next week going to the end of the month and the dow starts to trade in the 27,450 or higher area area and the s p breaks out the spy starts to go into the 30250 303 this is the move that might force people in and i'm looking at this and, you know we, we are along the I, iai which is the broker dealer um, ETF. This is at a spectacular move, very quietly. Uh, and, and be careful trading this, it has very low volume, but it's trading at 6609. Uh, we're in since 60 and it's up 
and in a very quiet market. So if this thing starts to take out, I'd say for a long time, if it goes to 65s and then treats the 63s as support and then breaks into the 67s, I think it's just going to be telling you that people are buying stocks. People are in the market. They're not talking about it, but they're actually in it. And that's going to be, uh, that, that'll get this next phase much quicker than I thought. I thought we'd have to have a timeout before we get the next phase. I'm just dealing with numbers. That's all. So we'll see how we can get out of it in the next day, in the next up, up to Friday's close. We're going to see whether it is it a pullback. But if, if it wasn't today and there was good opportunity, wow, this is really good action. So that's that junk. JNK is the question about it. JNK is the Sp Spider Barclays high yield bond fund peak D at the 200 period moving average of 109.29 just uh, four weeks ago. It's still sitting there. It's at 108.72. That's like a magnet. That's the high yields. And I suggest to you that we've got to watch yields. There's a, even though the Fed comes out later uh, in a week's time and talks about uh, rates, maybe the market just has its own thing going here. So watch 133.50 on the upside for a breakout for yields to go lower, the TLT to go higher. If the TLT goes below 1, 29.50, it says yields are going quite a bit higher. Okay, thank you for being here. Stay tuned for Steve, Dave, and Tom O'Brien. I'll be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter, and I'll be looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great day.